Alrighty folks, and we're back. Here we're going to continue with quantum mechanics. Remember we talked about quantum numbers in the last video, and we discussed the first two. The n quantum number, which as a recap is the energy level, and it has integer numerical values greater than or equal to 1. Of course, that represents the energy level of the electron. The bigger that number, the farther away the electron is from the nucleus, the bigger the electron cloud. The second quantum number is the L quantum number, and that is the sublevel within that energy level. We said the first energy level can have one sublevel. Its numerical value is zero. Remember, L ranges from zero to n minus one. Now, the name for, zero, for the zero sublevel is called the S sublevel. The second energy level, we said there can be two sublevels, zero and one, or S and P. The third energy level can have three sublevels, L equals 0, 1, and 2, or the S, P, and D sublevel. And the fourth can have four sublevels, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we would say on the fourth sub, uh, energy level there are four sublevels, the S, the P, the D, and the F. And of course, these sublevels get larger as the energy level increases. So the 1S sublevel, the 1S would be a spherical, we'll talk about the shape in just a second, of a certain diameter. And the 2s would have the same shape, but it would be much larger, and the 3s would be larger still. All right, so we have the n and the l quantum number. The n is the energy level, and the l is the sublevel. All right, now, that l quantum number, once again, is the shape of the orbital. For example, an S sublevel has a spherical shape. That's the shape of an S sublevel. A P sublevel, these are wave functions, remember, and uh, it can take on a, uh, a uh, figure eight type of shape, almost a peanut shape. We call that a P sublevel. The D sublevel, uh, well, they're uh, illustrated on pages 108 to 109, but for the most part, they have a clover leaf shape. And that's the D sublevel. And the F sublevel, well, boy, it's not even illustrated in your textbook. I had to search to find this one. Um, that has quite an interesting shape. You'll notice the S um, sublevel is easy to make. It doesn't require a lot of energy for an electron to spin around in a spherical type of orbital. The P takes more energy. Now remember, the second energy level is the first energy level with the P sublevel. And one reason for that is because it takes more energy for that electron to have that shape. So the second energy level has an S and a P sublevel within it. The D sublevel, well, that electron wave is even more difficult to make. There's what we call two nodes. And that takes even more energy. So that electron needs to be on the third energy level to make that type of shape. And then, as you can imagine, the F has more nodes. We say it has three nodes. It's lots and lots of energy to make that, so it has to be all the way in the fourth energy level where there's lots of energy. All right, now that takes us to the M quantum number, sometimes called the M sub L. This number represents the orbital that the electron is in. It essentially represents the orientation of that sublevel in space. Mathematically, M can have numerical values that range from the negative value of L to the positive value of L. For example, I claim a P sublevel can be orientated three different ways. So you're asking yourself, how do you get three different ways for a P sublevel? Do you recall that the P's numerical value is, do you remember? Well, where is that page? I misplaced it, I found it. The P's numerical value is one. Do you remember that? So, if it can range from negative L to positive L, wouldn't that be negative 1, 0, and positive 1? That's three different orientations in space. And these orientations are represented by that n quantum number, and once again can range from negative L to positive L. So, once again, what is the numerical value of a P sublevel? 1. So M in this case will have values of negative 1, 0, and positive 1. 
Now let's talk about these quickly. A P sublevel has that figure eight type of three dimensional shape. I could orientate that on an X, Y, Z axis. That one's coming in and out of my paper here. We'll define this as my Y axis, the one going up and down. So we would call this a PY orientation. But couldn't that P sublevel also be orientated? We'll define this as my X axis on the X axis. And we would call that, you guessed it, PX. How else could that be orientated? Well, let's see. Remember we have the Z axis coming in and out of my paper. We're going to define that as the Z. And so we could have this type of orientation for a P sublevel. And that's called PZ. Numerically we call it negative 1, 0 and positive 1. Now by the way, that could be Y, X, or Z, negative 1, 0 or positive 1. It makes no difference. There are just three different orientations. Now, if we have a D sublevel, what are the M values? Remember, D's numerical value, let's take a look at that. that D's numerical value is 2. Remember, the L value for a D is 2. So that means if the D's numerical value is 2, um, the M can range from negative 2 to positive 2. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. We have five different um, sublevel orientations. And they're illustrated here in your notes. We have the DZ squared, DX squared minus Y squared, DYZ, dxz and dxy. They are also illustrated in your textbook on page 109. Fortunately, you do not have to memorize these orientations. Now we call these m values orbitals. And each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. That's it. So, how many electrons can I hold in the entire d sublevel? Now remember, in the D sublevel, there are one, two, three, four, five orientations, right? Or orbitals, and each one of those can hold two electrons. So we can have a total of ten electrons in a D sublevel. How about a P sublevel? Remember? In a P sublevel, we have negative one, zero, and positive one. If each orbital can hold two electrons, we can have one, two, three. I'm illustrating those electrons with arrows. Um, we'll have some pointing up, and the second one in each orbital will have pointing down. Four, five, six. So my P sublevel can hold six electrons. How about my F sublevel? Remember F's numerical value? F's numerical value is three. So we have negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two, and positive three. So we have seven different orientations, remember? And each orientation, or each orbital, can hold two electrons. So we'll have seven arrows going up, and seven arrows going down, for a total of, you guessed it, 14 electrons in the F sublevel. And of course, the S sublevel, there's only one orientation, and that can hold two electrons. Now, the last quantum number is called the S quantum number, sometimes called the M sub S. This number represents the spin that an electron has. Mathematically, S can have two values, either positive one half or negative one half. That's it. And this number is used to represent the two electrons in each orbital. So if I were able to look down on an electron as it's spinning around in its orbital, if it spins clockwise, we would say it has a positive one-half spin. And if it's spinning counterclockwise, it would have what we call a negative one-half spin. That's the only way that those two electrons can fit in one orbital. Remember, electrons both have, these electrons both have a negative charge, so they want to repel each other. It takes energy for them to stick in that same orbital. The only way they can tolerate being together is if they have opposite spins. So oftentimes, 
what we like to do is we like to write those electrons as one arrow going up and one going down for the opposing spin. So remember the S sublevel, there's only one orbital or one orientation, it can hold two electrons. The P sublevel can have three orientations, negative one, zero, and positive one. It can hold a total of six electrons. The D sublevel can have five orientations, negative two to positive two, so it can hold a total of ten electrons. And then finally, the last one we worry about is our F sublevel. It ranges from negative three to positive three. Let's see if I count it right. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. That's my F. And each orbital can hold two electrons. Notice I'm putting them in one at a time until that sublevel is half full, and then I start doubling them up. There's a reason for that, and we'll get to that later. And that can hold 14 electrons. Now, once again, the S can hold 2, the P can hold 6, the D can hold 10, and the F can hold 14. Now, the really cool thing about the periodic table is it reminds us of this uh, configuration. Notice the periodic table is broken up into certain sections. This first section is two electrons wide. This section over here on the right, uh, when I say two electrons, I should have said two atoms wide. This on the right is one, two, three, four, five, six wide. Right smack dab in the middle, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wide. And you'll never guess how many are on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen wide. So we see that pattern of two, six, ten, fourteen repeating itself on the periodic table. And in the next videos, we will learn why. Interesting uh, note is that this basic design of the periodic table was around decades before we understood this wave particle uh, nature of an electron. So it was quite interesting as things fell into place to those physicists and chemists who came up with these neat little quantum numbers to describe the behavior of the electrons and how neatly it worked with the periodic table. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Just as a quick recap, we have four quantum numbers, the N, the L, the M, and the S quantum number. N is the energy level, L is the sublevel, M is the orientation of that sublevel or the orbital, and S would be the spin of that, of those electrons within that orbital. Let me just wrap this up today by talking about Wolfgang Pauli. He's the guy who introduced that fourth quantum number, that spin quantum number, and he came up with the Pauli exclusion principle. It states that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers. In other words, no two electrons can be in the same place at the same time. Now I should qualify that when I say no two electrons. No two electrons in a particular atom can have the same address. They can't be in the same place at the same time. Their set of four quantum numbers, N, L, M, and S, must be different for all the electrons buzzing around any atom. All right, we'll wrap that up. Those are your four quantum numbers, and we're going to start applying that to Henry Eyring's hotel analogy next time. Thanks so much for being with me, and you'll want to review this a couple of times because I know it's heady stuff. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.